I'm Tom Kimmel and I'm going to talk today about the famous green steam engine designed by a fellow out of San Diego and you could buy this little kit for about a hundred dollars some years ago machine it put it together I hired a fellow to do it the best part of the whole story is he has Mr. Green has a very good uh, website in what he says that this is a modern and efficient steam engine. <clears throat> what he has done is this is a flexible shaft right here. Mr. Green was in the flexible shaft business and many years ago he was making a two-wheel drive bicycle with these flexible shafts that are made out of coiled wire. So he decided that he would find another use for the flexible shaft. And what he did is made a, an engine that would have the pistons. Here are the cylinders. The pistons are in here. Go back and forth. This is a wobble plate. It's actually called a Z engine after the capital letter Z. And this has a, a little shaft there sticking out at an angle. So these two pistons go back and forth. It makes this thing here go back and forth and it makes this thing go around. So he has succeeded in making a steam engine which does not have a connecting rod uh, or a crankshaft. Instead it has many worse things to it. I have met two people who spent over a million dollars each trying to perfect this engine and one of them told me about a third party out in North Carolina who tried the same thing. Everybody who has put money into these things has lost all of the money because there's an intrinsic fault in the machine in spite of the fact that the website says that it is modern and, e and efficient. Uh, it is neither modern nor efficient. Uh, nor does it work very well, but it does kind of work. And uh, I wrote a three and a half page article about what a bad design this was. I put it on my website and I got a two page letter back from Mr. Green with photos of his new engine. He has a new engine which has four cylinders instead of two and another one that has six cylinders instead of two on the theory that I would be impressed with a bad idea that was multiplied by either two or three times. So, what happens here is that there is kind of a rotary valve in here in which the steam comes in steam comes in the rotary valve this shaft here turns the, the valve back and forth which opens the intake and then it opens the exhaust and so the intake the steam comes from the rotary valve comes here goes here goes into here and then and then the exhaust valve opens steam goes back out through here the problem the ba there's any number of basic problems. One of the most basic problems is it gets all choked up. There's a very long line for the steam to come in, a very long line for the steam to go out, and you can't get the steam in and out fast enough with this long line and with the very small valve here. The people I talked to had made the valve bigger and bigger, three times and made it bigger. The intrinsic problem is in here. As you can see, this particular little pipe has to wobble back and forth. So the end of it is, is round. It's got obviously a hole in it. And this is like a hip socket. In fact, is they were going to have a very famous orthopedic surgeon on their board who knew how to make hip sockets for people to figure out how to make a hip socket for this that worked. And the problem is that you can only put a very small hole in the end of this and then 
The other problem is that the steam pressure is pushing this whole thing against this and so the only thing that holds up this end of the whole mechanism is this little doohickey thing which rests in a half round here is a half round socket and your steam has to come in and out of the hole that's in the middle of the little pipe which is the socket uh, which is fits in the socket and oh, and there's a lot of force in there and there's a lot of friction and there's a lot of all kinds of things and there's no way to make this large enough to get enough flow in and out because it's too long a flow and there's nothing you can do because this part of everything is out here wobbling around in the wind. Well besides being unable to balance this, you have all these unbalanced uh, weights flying around and there's no way to balance it but there's also no way to change the almost no way to change the cutoff so you have an efficient use of your steam and there is no way to keep it from just completely choking up and one of the worst things is your hot intake steam comes through this whole business and then it expands all the way piston starts out here, comes back to here, the steam is cooled off in the expansion, the, the exhaust steam has to be pushed back through this little passage all the way through here, and it cools off. All this metal on the way back gets cooled off, so that when the new slug of hot steam comes through, it gets cooled off as it tries to heat everything up. So there's any number of inefficiencies in the system. Uh, and the whole purpose was to avoid having a connecting rod and wrist pins by having this flexible shaft wobbling around. Um, I, met a, I met somebody with money uh, down in the Goshen, Indiana area who had hired a young engineer to research this. And I asked the fellow, I said, why did you, the, the, the young engineer was given the task of designing a steam engine because this other fellow had a very very good pellet burner lined up so he had a very good fire all he needed was a boiler or more precisely a steam generator and he needed an engine so he assigned the engineer to do the research the problem is that never in the history of the world has an engineer ever read a book or learned how to do research and so I asked the engineer why he chose this design. He said, well, he Googled it, he looked it up on the internet, the, the guy said he had a patent on it, and that it was modern and efficient. So he went with it, without having any understanding of what steam engines do, are trying to do, or should do. The basic issue with a steam engine is not getting the compressed high-pressure steam in, it is getting the exhaust out once the steam is expanded to nearly atmospheric pressure. It's a thousand times more volume than the steam that went in, and it's cooled off, and it has to get pushed through all the same little passages. Push through the pipe, push through a very small hole at the end of the pipe, push through a very small slot in the, in the valve here, and coming out. So, you will see this advertised, you will see people trying to make them work, and it may work for fractional horsepower, but it is basically not a good design. It cannot be lubricated, uh, it is just cannot be balanced. Uh, there's just many more things not right about it. So I wrote an article in my website, which I spent three and a half pages, describing all the things wrong with it and at the end of my my writing I said I have another two and a half pages to go to get all of the things that are not right about this engine but my fingers are tired from typing and it was a good enough article to get a two page letter from Mr. Green uh, recommending that I look at his new four and six cylinder engines and then rewrite what I had said about his engine. Uh, 
I did not bother telling him that, uh, that I was going to rewrite and point out that the four-cylinder engine was twice as bad as this and the six-cylinder engine would have been three times as bad. So when you're looking at steam engines or going to invent a steam engine, do not try to come up with the goofiest possible mechanical design you can think of. Uh, we don't need any more of those, just regular pistons and cylinders and connecting rods and wrist pins, sort of like you there are in several billion cars, trucks, uh, locomotives and ships. Uh, that is a better way to take a high pressure gas and turn it into mechanical motion.